This is my first attempt at doing a vehicle airbrush project freehand, no stencils, and it came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it, um, but there's some lines that aren't, that I'm not really satisfied with, especially that trim line that's um, pretty unique to a Mustang on the door, on the side. So I attempted to do a more cartoony version to see if I could exaggerate things. But it really didn't turn out like I hoped it would be. I think I need to exaggerate even more some of the features. This one kind of is more somewhere in a morphing stage of cartooning and realistic. So this one here is my third attempt. And I went ahead and did a, a pencil drawing first. Real quick, just freehand. I did use a, a Malstick guide for some of the lines just for reference, especially that door trim you know, that side trim panel feature on the Mustang that I felt like it needed to be um, pretty accurate. So this is me just doing a pencil sketch. I just got an online reference um, to help guide me. I just chose the black one just for, you know, big, to create a black and white version at first shot. And this is where I'm using the um, my Malstick to, to uh, draw in the the lines and just to get them accurate I just felt like I needed to do that um, and then now I'm just gonna go ahead and just outline the whole thing and this actually allowed me to focus more on my lines rather than constantly referring back to the image the reference image and so I felt like I had more control and was just able to flow a lot lot better um, you know, with all the pencil lines drawn in. I'm drawing, I'm airbrushing on a piece of paper. It's just a piece of butcher paper that I just pull off a roll in my shop. And you can see that my first attempt Mustang is behind the easel. And uh, it is, I wasn't sure if I would enjoy this, but it turned out to be that I, I really like it. It's fun. I wasn't sure how stable I would be doing lines like this, um, but it turns out I, I seem to have a pretty good, I don't know, stability. The brace is because, um, the brace on my wrist is because of years of doing construction. And here's where I'm using the um, ball stick as a guide to strike the lines on the sides. Um, and it did take a little practice. The first time I ever tried it, it just did take a little practice at first to line up the nozzle of the gun on the paper using the straight edge. What I learned is afterwards it became a little bit of a handicap because I had to, it took a few seconds to recalibrate um, going back to freestyle and so it was uh, kind of threw me off a little bit with some practice. I don't think I'll use the that stick much other than when I need to get a, a real you know clean line to my satisfaction. Um, now I'm just starting to sculpt and see I'm just now I'm using it for that um, whatever that is on the Mustang that's unique to the Mustang it's that I don't know it's a vent or just a grill or a grid um, putting in some of the um, seats and features on the glass now I'm starting to just kind of fill in a little bit bringing in some of the black tones I guess you call them low tones and then I leave the where the white tones are going to be, the highlights, and just sculpt and sculpt. That's the thing about airbrushing. It's the more layers, the more awesome it looks. And here I'm just chroming out the bumper. Same with those little smaller bumper features below, tires, just sculpting away. And I did a little bit of... Uh, wiggles with the tread to get kind of a tread effect kind of see it at close up there now i'm starting to come back now with um the orange i just used a, a fluorescent orange just kind of make those pop those lights and then the seats they were red seats so i just thought i'd make them red and I'll just, i make the interior real subtle so it doesn't stand out now here i'm using that set to get that highlight on the lower part of that trim i'm just striking it um, and it really, I really like that. And then the rest, I'm just going to freehand. These, this is now I'm filling in the um, all the chrome, the chrome trim, chrome mirrors. Um, and then I'll come back and 
with black and detail it in again. So this is just getting my chrome features and highlights. That's just, I just fill it in the Mustang horse logo there, just, just kind of indicating it for now. And then I'll come back and detail that in. This is more chrome trim around the grill. There's FORD Ford. I just kind of <laughs> indicated. And I'm not trying to make this photographic or real. If you wanted to photograph, just take a picture of your car, stick it on your wall. This is a custom airbrush, as freehand as possible. You see, it's all just been done with freehand other than those few lines. Here I'm chroming out the rims and it's just real um, representative and not not extremely photographic. So it gives it that cool airbrush look. Now I'm just kind of making the, there's another little emblem, little flare on the fender, more, more uh, trim. Now I'm coming in with the black and detailing everything out. So I'm just, again, just kind of spotting it. Just pull back the trigger, boom, 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 boom. Same with the letters, F-O-R-D, give a little drop shadow inside of the letters. Now I'm just going to um, do a red halo because the seats were red, so I thought I'd just incorporate that. Kind of looks cool, the black and red together. Going back and doing some more highlights. Now I'm going to um, highlight the chrome and uh, really draw that out some more. So airbrush is about layers, layers, and layers, and layers. you can do them layers forever, but you got to limit your time on these projects, especially something like this, where you want to, you know, it needs to be cost effective as well. So here I'm just spot chrome in places, and you can go overboard with this. Um, so you, this is the one part you got to really be um, attentive to and not do too much. You can just get carried away, but there's a lot of chrome on this on this vehicle, so. Here I'm white out, you know, I'm just whiting in the letters Mustang below the car. Uh, that'll help me guide me when I go ahead and outline. And then I'm going to strike a line. Here's where I'm using my mall stick again. And I'm going to leave this line in as a feature just because I wanted to have that in there. So I thought about that ahead of time. I may not do that every time, but in this case I wanted to. Now I'm just outlining the letters that I created with my white. And I, I'm pretty good with letters, so... I feel comfortable, you know, with shapes of letters. I've been doing that my whole life. So lettering I love and airbrushing with lettering is fun. Um, again, it's airbrushed, so it looks like it's airbrushed. And so I'm going to come back and I'm going to bolt it up some more so it uh, really stands out. And then I'm going to chrome out these letters, but it's going to be a real quick, easy, low-tech chrome. I'm just, I'm not using any mask. Normally you would put a little, um, like a stencil right there at the top of those to really crisp up the line, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just, I'm just indicating the chrome and then a low light, kind of like a skyline. It's all going to be black and white. I'm not going to colorize it. Uh, now I'm going back and just doing a quick um, white highlight and um, a few stars now here and there, make it sparkle. I did that same thing on the car as well. And now I'm, I, I did a white um, inline for, the, for this letter forever, and that gives me a f something to follow. It's, it's a common um, technique that people use, especially on t-shirts, things like that. And it seems everyone has a unique way of accomplishing their projects. And now I'm just um, finishing up, filling in this forever, and there is the final project. Thank you so much for watching, and happy airbrushing.